Do you know a lot of people think about what's on their heads? And that's the thing that I've been thinking about when I go riding. And especially after my little retail therapy trip, I'm looking at helmets. My name is Fletch, and today I'll be talking about the Shark F Drag, the safety helmet that I decided to buy uh, on my retail therapy. So let's take this on the road and let's talk about stuff that we should be talking about that I like about this helmet and of course the rest of the stuff uh, that you probably might be interested to know. Right folks, I'm now on my bike uh, and I would like to talk to you today about this about this helmet here, which is the Sharp s track This is something that I did on a recent purchase. I have to flip my visor down, sorry. Well, it wasn't an impulse buy. There were many reasons behind it, which I'll talk about it later. But I think to have it a little bit more structured, I'd like to go through maybe four topics. Right? The first of which is specifications. The second of which is comfort. The third is safety. And the last one, the fourth point, is basically to talk about my thoughts and uh, feelings about this particular helmet. Let's start with the first topic. And the first topic is the specifications. Uh, basically, this is a s drag no, the Shark s drag And this is basically the carbon 2. Okay, so what does that mean is that this is a pretty light helmet. In fact, it weighs in at about 2.2 pounds, or just under one kilo, which makes it one of the so-called uh, lighter helmets around. It is, of course, made of carbon fiber, which means that uh, it's pretty sturdy. It comes with uh, a little visor, and, of course, the face shield, which is detachable. In terms of sizes, I think um, it is very similar to the bell, for the sense. So, when you look at the size chart, you realize that basically all the sizes work for the measurements that you do. You know, if you were to measure your forehead as, you, as they instruct you to do in all the, 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 the uh, various uh, size charts, that whatever your measurement is to the size is very accurate. So this is very similar to the bell in the sense that a uh, medium is 60 to 60 watt, well, 50 I think it's 55 to 61, I'll put the, the, all the specifications up. Um, and in my case, I'm about 60 to 61, which falls under the medium. Well, most, for most cases, helmets, you probably need to wear them. You need to try it out to make sure that, you know, the sizes really fit to what they say. But in this case, uh, I, I wear a medium for most of the helmets when it comes to open face helmets like this. Just like the bell helmet, I wear a medium as well. So this one fits very well. If I was to go to a large, it was, you know, it was shaky and, and there's a lot of space and everything. I was not really very good. So it's a good idea to just stick to uh, this particular size. So in terms of fitment, uh, it works pretty well. Hey, lady, fuck up my thing. I don't understand these uh, motorcycles with uh, little motorcycles with a lot of exhaust. They pretend to be Harleys. The second point I would like to talk about is um, comfort. Right? I think that's the most important thing. Now, the way this fits, and you know, there's a lot of times uh, that a lot of the helmets out there are made for different head shapes and different. That's obviously right. But I think the one thing that, in terms of head shapes, uh, especially for the Asians, uh, is that we're predominantly over with uh, well, with slightly odd shaped heads. You know. So uh, there are certain helmets that, because of the the shape, it literally cuts into your uh, the top of your head, so it really feels quite hard to wear. So uh, I avoid those helmets. But uh, I think in general the bells and the RIs and the cherries and, and in this case uh, the sharks actually fit uh, 
most of our helmets. It's one of the more popular brands anyway. And it fits um, the head. So therefore, it's pretty comfortable. It's not too tight, spacious. It comes, of course, with the overlining as all helmets should. Right? So the good thing about uh, the, the lining that we all have for this helmet is that it is well cushioned. There's even space between the cheek pads to put your speakers, where like in my case I have the center, um, so that you know you can also listen to music and start to communicate with other bikers. And of course, the most important thing to comfort is cleanliness, right? But uh, I, I have one pair of helmet which was I, I can't remember what was the brand, what was the model of that particular open face bell helmet. But the problem with that particular helmet is, even though it's very comfortable, the liners weren't able to remove. So, you know, you have to spend a lot of time trying to clean it and get all the products to do it. But then you find that ultimately, no matter how well you clean it, it's still going to smell. And, you know, there's a slight, there's definitely discomfort there with uh, the fact that it's not, not really very clean. You can't machine wash the interior. Pretty much a no no for me. So I think it's really important that, um, you know, in terms of comfort, cleanliness is one of them. The most important thing about an open face helmet in terms of comfort is, of course, um, the fact that you have more ventilation. Now, the bad part about motor blogging in this helmet is that, you know, there's a lot of uh, wind noise and stuff like that, but I don't know whether it's translating to the microphone. Uh, and how it's going to affect the overall audio of, uh, of this. If I want to switch lanes. Yeah. And I decided to take another route. Because uh, that's just crazy. So I'm going to end up taking a longer route. But it doesn't matter, I'm on the right. That's the most important thing. The next part is safety. But a real caveat, right? Basically, an open face helmet isn't as safe as a full face helmet. So let's be clear. Okay? If you're going on short rides like I'm doing, so the open face helmet is by no means as safe as a full face helmet. Now, you may say that, oh, yeah, that, you know, this is actually a full face helmet, but it's not. No. This mask is removable, but that will mean that if I hit the downer, if I got knocked off the bike, this thing's going to come flying off. There is absolutely no jaw protection. But if you're on a short ride and you're careful, or well, try to be as careful as you can, I think um, everything should be all right. You know, but I, I, as best as possible, try to wear a full face helmet along the distance. You know, this is almost like a full face helmet. It keeps the cut out of my face and stuff like that. This is basically rated uh, ECC, right? ECC, of course, is the European uh, Safety Commission that certifies helmets. And of course, it's DOT as well. So well, that's good, right? So it's both uh, ECC and DOT. So you know that, that this helmet will hold up for sure. The other feature that I like, uh, you know, us, uh, obviously as guys, you know, we always go on the internet and, and we do our research and everything else. And one of the things in all the reviews I saw that the chin strap was a quick connector. So you know the clips, right? Now, in Singapore, we also have a certified council or committee or organization that certifies helmets and if you have if you don't have a t-ring and it's a clip you don't pass uh, the helmets minimally must be must be uh, certified by a group by a by the organization or, or should i say the government body called the psb right uh, i'll put out what it means uh, i can't remember what it means the good thing is that if it's still ecc and dot they will still recognize it but if, if the helmet doesn't have any other ratings, it has to be rated PSB certified by the local government or the local uh, enforcement agency. So in this case, it's good. So uh, the reason why I brought it up is because, uh, like I said, when I was reading uh, and, and watching all the reviews, uh, a lot, all of it said that the chin strap was a uh, clip. 
right? Because, you know, if you fall off, and over time, this doesn't really hold very well. So in terms of safety, you come off and so does your helmet, that's not helping you at all. Now, the good thing about this helmet is that they're using D-rings. Wow. Uh, the traffic is picking up, as you can see. Uh, starting to be a little bit bad. And I decided to keep my speed down a little bit because I wanted to make sure that the wind noise doesn't get to my uh, microphone. Uh, hopefully it's uh, not that bad. The D-ring is a definite plus. So in terms of safety, it covers just about everything. But again, uh, one more time I repeat, is it, it's not a full face, it's not as safe. Simple as that. Oh, oh. method jam. I'm not going to go between the... Oh, man. I don't want to do that. Anyway. Well, the traffic really is very bad, and as you can see, um, I wanted to take this particular route because I was thinking that at least uh, it wasn't so bad. That's probably why uh, that, uh, the traffic is very bad and there's an accident there. A couple of thoughts about this helmet for me. Now, this is my impression. Let's talk about the pros. The first pro, of course, for me, very important, and why I decided to get this helmet is the fact that it is, uh, the fact that it is light. Uh, being 2.2 pounds and just under a kilogram makes a big difference because I believe that my Chevy is 1.3 kgs. And probably about around three half pounds. I don't know. I probably get, have to put that conversion up again for that. Uh, so that's pretty heavy. The fact that uh, the full face helmet means that there is ventilation, but the problem with the ventilation is that it's, uh, you know, you, especially in a hot day, it really can get really very bad here in, in Asia and in Singapore, especially. We're well, right on the equator. So the heat can really get to you. You know, you get stuffy, you can't breathe, blah, blah, blah. So it really takes, uh, it's really very uncomfortable for short trips, especially. But if it's a long trip, it doesn't matter. You're on the highway, you fly, you're going at highway speeds. So it's not really an issue. But in this case, uh, it can be a bit bad. Wow, traffic jam again. Are you kidding me? So long as they're moving, I don't really care. No, don't come to a, to a full stop. Guys. Oh, come on. Uh, next is, of course, the fact that it's carbon fiber. ECC and dot uh, aside, the fact that it's carbon fiber means it can take a little bit more impact. Right? So your, uh, your peanut gets... Uh, <laughs> so your peanut here gets, gets protected. Right? And I don't understand this. So that's the other reason. This is actually the Sharp uh, S Drop Carbon 2 for, and it's actually a brand new helmet for 2020. Um, so you get the latest model. Everything's been changed a little bit. It will be more interesting in terms of uh, removing the mask. You know, if you can wear a mask, and you can take off the, the visor and put on goggles if you want, you know, or uh, if you, even if you don't want to, uh, you can wear glass, sunglasses and so forth. In fact, here's the other thing. Uh, it says uh, it features an easy fit. So when they refer to easy fit, it's not about putting it on your peanut. <laughs> it is about 
being able to wear glasses for those of you who wear glasses and, and of course it's not just about regular glasses but even sunglasses as well that it will go in and not poke you in the ear or poke you in the head because it's squeezing and everything else you know so the, in terms of comfort level that's there so which is something i should put in comfort but uh, anyway that's a that's a pro uh, as far as i'm concerned now when it comes to uh cons one of the things that i really dislike about this helmet is uh, this visor first and foremost it comes with a smoke visor if it's a uh, bright sunny day that's fine it's lightly tinted but not smoky the smoke is just simply not allowed here in singapore smoke with reflective visors are not allowed here in singapore but it's lightly tinted. But that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, what I really hate about this visor is the fact that, number one, the way it's sitting on the hinges that allows you to lift and close the visor is very fragile. I found this a hard way when I was getting to my bike uh, in the car park at my office when I was going, to, when I was going home. And what happened was that uh, Instead of putting it through the D-ring, I just put it onto the little uh, clip-on uh, that secured the strap. And of course, the weight of the helmet is still heavy, in a sense, right? It still has weight. Gravity, right? Newton, right? Gravity. And so it slipped off and fell, and it hit the ground. It was hard. It wasn't a far distance fall. But, the, but you know, what happened was that the hinges, I think, inside got dislodged and... I think one, on one side, I think it's broken in a sense, you know, uh, although I could still fit it back. But that's how fragile it is. You get a, a, a slightly hard knock and, and the visor is already uh, screwed, right? Uh, which is not something that you would like to happen because you're depending on it to keep the wind out of your face or your eyes, actually. That's what the thing is for, for me anyway. Uh, I know people who fly without visors, uh, not not something I would suggest. And basically, it's just fragile. And of course, the other downside, or the other con is that being an open face helmet, uh, unless my system is an awesome system in terms of audio, vlogging in this is, I don't know. You guys will only know. I mean, at this speed, with no wind, obviously you can hear me. But, um, when I was going at higher speeds earlier, which wasn't very high anyway, I thought I was doing 70, 80 kilometers, which is about roughly uh, 45 to 50 miles an hour, uh, highway speed, so to speak, uh, because of the traffic. And what happened was that uh, there's going to be a lot of wind noise, right? So. Uh, I, I'm going to have to see. I mean, if, if, if after editing this video and I find that uh, the audio is acceptable, uh, even for any, even for me, uh, I'm pretty particular about it, then I will continue to do some vlogs in this helmet. Otherwise, vlogs are going to go back to my show uh, and so forth. That's uh, all I have to say about uh, the Sharp s drag helmet. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button. And don't forget, if you haven't yet also, hit the subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell to let you know when my next video is out. Once again, folks, thank you very much for watching. I'm Fletch, and you guys have a very safe ride.